What is up everybody? My name is Andrew and welcome to Space Engineers episode number 18. In this episode we are going to be continuing the work we did on the relays and also the work we were doing on our new tank vehicle. Uh, you may notice um, something happened over here. I don't I, th I feel like this is just clang with the uh, uh, with those things right there and if I raise them it'll probably fix it but uh, I guess we'll try it. Let's let's reverse this. No, maybe not. <laughs> well you never know with clang right? Oh well, we're just going to let that sit there. For now, it's fine. I think they were too close together, and as a result, this happened during a save. Or this shifted over or something, I really don't know. But uh, but anyway, you guys gave me a lot of suggestions for vehicles to look at. Uh, and so now I have a very nice um, uh, set of browsers on my right side screen with uh, a lot of different vehicles. And so, um, first thing, correction, last episode I was saying this was an IAV, an infantry armored vehicle. That's not really a thing. It's actually an IFV, which is an infantry fighting vehicle. I was, uh, I was using the wrong terminology there, but I have it right now. Uh, so I'm actually looking at the correct vehicles, uh, which is good. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move this to the top. So it's going to be an actual turret that can spin around. Uh, the reason for that is because I realized that the way that it's set up right now um, is not really how an IAV would even look, or an IFV, oh my gosh. Uh, this is how a tank destroyer would look from like World War II era. Uh, so we're actually going to make this a little more uh, robust, let's say, and move the turret up top so it can spin all the way around 360 degrees, and that should help us out a little bit. That will also make it much easier to do any of this stuff that we we're trying to do, like fill this in, because uh, we don't have to worry about the, the range of movement for this thing down here, because it'll be up here. Uh, now off camera, I did do a little uh, a little designing here, and that's just kind of the design I want to go with right there. Um, just kind of closing it in on the top. We won't have enough room to walk on these sides, but we will have enough room to walk down here, uh, where the block is going to be like right there. We have enough room to clear. We don't have enough room to jump, I'll put it that way, but we have enough room to walk. As far as these seats go, I might actually end up removing these at the end, I don't know, we'll keep them there for now, but I might end up putting in some components there instead, uh, because this is only a single player world, so the components that could go there would probably be like a survival kit, or uh, maybe like a little refinery, or a little assembler or something, just some small uh, components instead of the seats. So we'll see what we do with that stuff. Um, Alright, let's continue working on this. I'm going to remove this completely, and I'm going to instead place it up here somewhere. Actually, you know what, real quick, I don't want to deal with the uh, the whole center problem that we have where we have two blocks instead of three. So I am actually going to expand this to be three blocks across so we have a center point. Uh, this is going to take a little bit of time, but I'm going to do it real quickly with the power of editing. All right, there we go. Easy peasy. It is now one uh, block uh, shifted to the left or shifted to the right at rather. So now everything is a little bit wider and we now have a center point, which is good because now we can put the turret up in a place where uh, where we can be confident that there won't be any problems related to that. So this right here is the center point. Um, I think we're gonna put the turret somewhere like, maybe there, yeah, maybe there-ish. Uh, but I'm gonna have two layers of armor, so the turret's gonna go up one above this. Uh, and also I have to remember to use, oh wait, shoot, I have to use an advanced rotor, don't I? Wait, hang on. So we're not gonna be able to store any of our ammo on the ship. We're gonna have to store it up in this, uh, this sort of thing we're about to make. Uh, because, unfortunately, the small rotor doesn't have any way to bring materials through. The, uh, the pistons and the, uh, the hinges have the ability, but the, the uh, normal rotor does not. Again, the advanced rotor does have the ability, but it's a ginormous connection. It's not a small connection, and as a result, uh, you know, we can't really use it because we'd have to have a, a big container or something underneath, um, which is just not really uh, workable here. So we're going to put our rotor like that, and then we're going to have our... Uh, our turret up top like that. So two layers of armor, um, except for where this thing is, but uh, but I think that should be enough armor on the top. All right, roof segment complete. That is a thick roof. Good lord. Um, I feel like our siding is not up to par now. Uh, so the weakest point they could shoot would be like this side right here. Unless I remove all the chairs, which I might just do as well. Um, then I could add one more layer of siding. But like down here, it's two layers. Up here, it's like one and a half and one and maybe a quarter and then up here it's like straight up two layers so pretty much if they're shooting from above they're gonna have a hard time getting in here um, and hopefully we'll be able to take them out before they uh, before they can do that as well so I really hope that this uh, that this rotor never breaks because it's gonna be really hard to get to but anyways uh, so we're gonna have essentially this thing it's gonna be like that 
And then we're going to have a hinge, right? No, wait. The hinge is going to be one forward, rather. So we're going to have this, like that. And then a hinge, which will allow it to go up and down, uh, is going to be on the front of that right there. All right. So with the gun added on, it kind of looks like that. Uh, and I feel like that is a little low. I think I want... Wait, actually, hang on. Let's give it a test real quick. Let's start with the uh, the rotor. I want to kind of turn that. Uh, so we'll hop in here and hop in uh, third person. But a little bit closer, please. If we can, uh, you're not going to let us. All right, you know what? We're just going to go in first person then. And we're going to go in, uh, in, in this mode right here. All right, so rotor, let's see if it can turn, first of all. Because that is important. So can you turn? Yes, you can certainly turn. Awesome. Let's go to our hinge. Uh, and let's see if it can go up and down. So let's give it a, a nice velocity. Okay, it actually looks like that is clipping through everything. But I think I'm fine with that. As long as that doesn't cause problems in the future, I think it'll be good. Alright, let's put that like level again or something like this. There we go. That's reasonably level. Alright, I think this is pretty good. Um, okay, let's continue making this uh, this big gun right here. And remember, we have to store all of our ammo in this thing, so we're going to have it all back here, kind of, in little uh, little containers that we'll fill up before we go. Uh, so we'll have to manually fill this up because, again, unfortunately, it cannot connect to anything down here, uh, just because of the connection types. Um, and I hope they fix that in the future. I hope they add other options. Alright, everybody, a couple of modifications have been made. I removed the seats for now. I might re return a couple of them, but for now I removed them. Um, so, I actually expanded this one block out to the side. Uh, and the reason I did that is because I want to add some uh, some skirting on the side that will kind of go over the wheels and hide this big gap where the wheels are allowed to kind of go up and down. Um, so I expanded it one block, and what that allows us to do is defend what I was previously saying was a weak point. Uh, where if they shoot at the top right here, there was only one block of, or one and one and a fourth of a block of, uh, of cover, now we can add this little bit right here. So, uh, right here we have two layers of armor, right here we have one, two, and then two and maybe like three quarters, and then here we have one, two, and one quarter or so. Uh, which means, actually I could even, if I wanted to, I could make it look a little bit more, uh, cool by doing something like this on the inside. Uh, and, and I can actually leave this blank right here, or empty, uh, and I can run a line of, of like conveyors or whatever I want to put right there, um, even lights, possibly. Uh, so I can leave that blank right there, I don't need it because it's already got that two layer, which is this standard that we're kind of going for for the whole ship. Now with this new profile, I think it does kind of look a little bit better for its height, um, because previously it just looked really tall for no reason, but now it looks much, uh, much wider. Uh, it is much wider, it's actually two blocks wider now, but uh, as a result of that, it's actually going to look a little bit more, um, I guess, filled out, a little bit more realistic, so it's not this, this just this gigantic thing. Um, oh, we have a ship above us. A Spirit of Le Monde. Again, not afraid of a Spirit of Le Monde. Uh, now for the front, again, I'm redesigning the entire front. Hopefully it's going to look better. Uh, we're redoing everything pretty much. Uh, hopefully it'll look good. <laughs> That's the idea, at least. All right. Let's, uh, let's see if we can get this front redone. Alright, the new front is coming together. It's kind of a lot more, uh, shapely, I guess. It's a lot more to the point. These wheels are probably not gonna be at this level. I might bring them up a little bit, uh, which I can do in the control panels in there. But, the front's basically gonna go like this, and then up like that. Uh, however, we've run out of iron, so we need to go on a quick little iron expedition. To the ship! Iron, 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 iron. You know when you say a word enough times, it starts to sound really weird. I think iron is kind of like that. You start to say iron, 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 iron. It sounds as if you're saying iron a bunch of times. But but anyway, we're gonna get this iron. In the early part of this series, and in one of the early episodes, I actually was talking about how I've never depleted an ore deposit before, but I think we're kind of getting close. With this iron, uh, with this iron deposit, so we're gonna have to find a new one pretty soon. Luckily, I'm pretty sure there's one just like, kind of where we're gonna build our lighthouse, uh, just kind of above, or, or like around that general area. I don't know for sure. I'll have to go and scout it out, but I think there is one. But again, we're almost done with this uh, with this iron deposit. We've just got a couple more things, unless it opens up to a bigger iron deposit, which we'll I guess we'll find out. But uh, but let's get all the iron we can out of here at least, and then. Uh, Hopefully that'll have a set for a little while. We got those yield modules, so, um, yeah. Alright. 
All of the iron shall be mine. I think I'm mostly getting rock here. And uh, yeah, that is confirmed. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of iron though. All right, I think we're about at our weight. Uh, let's check out the, the, the hull here. 6.2 iron, oh my god, that's so much. Uh, 24k iron um, with 66k stone. Uh, 46k iron with 45k stone. 21k iron with uh, 69k stone. So it looks like we have approximately maybe 90,000 iron or so. Uh, which is not bad. That's not a bad haul. I will uh, I will take that. Oh, care okay, gotta be careful. We're gonna crash our ship um, All right, let's bring that back to our base. Love the dune power bank off in the distance over there um, But let's bring this back to our base and yeah um, Yeah, that poor iron vein is, is pretty much all but depleted. We need to uh, we need to find a new one going a little fast here We're gonna go we're gonna thread the needle there uh, always got to be careful when you when you're filled up with all that uh, material stuff because Everything becomes a little more difficult. It's more difficult to stop. It's more difficult to go up. Uh, so you got to be, got to be uh, very conscious of your weight in space, engineers. It's been a long time since I've crashed my ship uh, due to mining, but I used to do it all the time. Uh, eight, nine. All right. Um, yeah, it pretty much. It used to be a staple of my mining operations is that I would just eventually crash my ship because I'd be going down or something, and I wouldn't realize that. It's very difficult to go up when you're going down, uh, and so I, I would crash it. But fortunately, this thing has enough thrusters, I guess, to uh, to actually work uh, to work out. All right, let's check out what's going on here. It looks like uh, all of our iron is being taken, and it looks like we did have around 90k. But uh, let's go to the refineries. All right, refineries, you take the iron first. You take the iron first. Uh, I'll let you guys do whatever you want uh, because that stone usually goes pretty quickly. But um, how, how are we doing over here? Are we getting some... Yeah, yeah, we're getting a little bit of iron. I would like this. Yes! Alright, let's get back to building. We're gonna get this front done. And then hopefully this whole... The, the rest of this thing's not too far... Uh, not too far off. Inbound on our position, it looks like we have a super gremlin, but we're not gonna worry about it because it's just a super gremlin and it's really, really high up. Probably. Uh, yes. Yeah, I can kind of see it. Um... Hopefully it doesn't come within our sphere of influence. I think it will, but uh, I don't think it'll come close enough to be shot at. We'll we'll find out though. We found out. Yes, we did. Uh, all right. The front's coming along. I think I might use this area as storage because honestly, a lot of it is going to be very well defended. Oh, I need to add those. Uh, let's add those. Boom, boomity boom, boom boom, bam, bamity bam, bam, bam. <laughs> So I think for the bottom right here, we're actually going to do a cheeky little uh, little spotlight. We're just going to stick one right there. Or not a spotlight, but I mean, it is a spotlight, but it's going to be floodlights. Uh, so they're going to, kind of going to be really low to the ground. We're also going to have some more up in this general area right here. Uh, so we'll have two lights down there, two lights up there. Maybe we'll have some up top as well. Maybe one on the gun. Um, I don't know. But we'll have those lights right there, and they should be able to illuminate stuff. <laughs> That's what lights are for. But anyways, uh, yeah. Oh, you know what? I know what we're gonna do. I know what we're gonna do at the front. Uh, we're gonna make a reactor. <laughs> Some of you guys were commenting, uh, how come we don't have any sort of uh, sort of power generation on this thing? Well, we have all the reactor stuff from the Hunchback dropship that we downed. Why don't we add a couple of reactors to this thing? Uh, so that'll be our power generation. Um, I was thinking I wanna make this front area a mainly a storage place. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick two reactors, I think, that's probably all it needs, honestly. This thing probably doesn't need much power. Uh, so we're gonna stick two reactors right, well, we could put four reactors. I mean, one, two, three, four, like that. And then have this, yeah, okay, that's not a bad idea. Let's put it like that. And then turn them around. And then stick them in right there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick some larger containers, uh, or medium containers, rather, right there. That'll be able to store 
um, larger things. Uh, now, unfortunately, they're only connected via these things, the small ones, so they're not going to be able to store uh, like a crazy amount of, of things, which is kind of a problem, to be honest. If I wanted to pipe a 3x3 three three thing, I could do so on the sides, like kind of under the chairs. All right, I've made a couple of slight modifications and at this point I think I know where the interior is going. So on the right side, I actually removed these, uh, like these batteries were evenly spaced. I actually moved them over to the left a little bit and instead added in these containers that are connected with their large sides, which means this will be very easy to store, uh, to store things that we need to store. Um, I also added in a couple of things which I haven't placed yet. So I added in this, uh, this is a survival kit, which will be good for being able to respawn. Um, I don't know how it's gonna work very well because a lot of this area, uh, we have to crouch to actually go, and if I, I think in this game, if you have to crouch, um, it'll actually spawn you outside the ship. Um, however, in some of these areas, we don't have to crouch. Like right here, we wouldn't have to crouch. So I wonder if it would spawn us right here. Uh, I guess we'll have to find out later. Um, but there's a little connection to that. And then down here, I actually removed a battery that was right there, and instead replaced it with an O2H2, uh, uh, what's it called, um, generator. A, uh, two engines down here and two hydrogen, small hydrogen tanks. Uh, so hopefully we have an alternate power source. And then on the front, of course, I added a couple of batteries. And then I also have these, uh, these little refineries, which will be able to use uranium if we need to. Uh, so with that, I think we've got a lot of the interior set up. I think this is most of what we want. We might add an antenna as well, uh, but we can add that in a little bit later. Uh, we probably don't need it quite yet. Let's go ahead and weld all this stuff up and then we can uh, try and build in the floor of this thing so we can finally say that that's done. Uh, and we'll put these chairs back as well. Um, yeah, all right, let's do that. All right, we should have enough for everything now. Uh, that's connected. We have more space right here where we can put things. I don't know what we'll put there. I guess if our O2H2 generator doesn't cut it when we decide to use ice, uh, we will add more over there because that's always an option. Uh, put that right there, that right there. All right, I think that's good. Um, again, lots of space down here. I don't really know what to do with, but uh, but we're just gonna kind of leave it like that and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll sort of floor over it. So the Wasteland DLC actually has these, uh, these nice barred windows. I think I'm gonna use some of those uh, to make the flooring here and see what it looks like. Uh, it should look pretty good, I think. Um, but we need it to be at least three like this. And I hope it won't prevent us from spawning since these are on the top. Uh, we need it to be like that, and I don't know how I'm going to weld all these because some of them are going to be very hard to weld. Uh, specifically, these ones that are inside the blocks do not want to weld. We're going to have to do some... Well, I don't know how we're going to weld them. I, I, I imagine at a certain angle they would weld. No? Why won't they weld? <laughs> what is wrong with these blocks? They won't weld. I don't know what's up with that. That's so weird. Uh, I would have to, like, remove the block under it to get it to weld first. And then it would weld. Yeah, what the heck? <laughs> Kane, your block is buggy. Alright, these little wasteland blocks are horrible. You, you just literally can't weld them if they're on top of something. That's so weird. Uh, but okay, we'll just use the armor blocks that they added. If they're not the same way, at least. Yeah, so in areas like this, we'll just try and use the, uh, the light armor panel. No, it's not gonna work any better. Really? What, what, what is wrong with these blocks? <laughs> I don't understand. Oh, wait, we actually got one. All right, Keen, since you're always asking for recommendations on how to make the game better, this uh, probably is one of them. H how come I cannot weld this? <laughs> it just seems like whenever one of these is on top of another block, you just cannot weld it. I can weld these ones just fine, but these ones right here just will not weld at all. I don't know. I I'm just going to keep it like this for now. Uh, maybe eventually I'll try and get a welding ship to just come in here and, and weld this. I don't know how that I'm going to be able to do that, but uh, yeah. For now, we're just going to keep it like this until it's fixed. <laughs> All right, did a little bit more of the roof, so we have more of this done. Uh, I moved the front seat a little bit forward so that we could have this nice viewport. <laughs> I don't know how well it's going to actually work, but yeah, it's pretty much going to be useless. But I figure he should ha have at least a way to see normally. Um, other than using third person, so that will exist. Uh, whether it'll be utilized very well or not will be up to up to the driver, I suppose. Yeah, it requires a lot of materials to build this thing. It's a really good thing we went on that that uh, that mining expedition at that one point, but it's almost done. 
Um, so I, I ran into a little bit of, of an issue with uh, with this part right here. So in order to connect the siding right here to the front right here, I had to use these kind of blocks to kind of make a third angle. So we have angle, 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 angle. So a fourth angle, I guess. But now I'm having trouble trying to connect these blocks directly to these blocks. So I know I could technically extend that, but I don't really know... Because look, look at the direction that's going. That's going up in that direction, so I don't really think I could extend it here without making the ship really wide. So I don't really know what to do about this little section right here. If any of you guys know a lot about blocks and how they work, uh, please let me know how, how you deal with this. Um, I might figure it out, but honestly, I don't really know. Bro, this thing looks ridiculous once it's all like kind of welded up. I mean, the wheels are going to look a little better because we're going to add skirting to it. So it'll look uh, it'll look more natural. Um, also, it's not going to be this high because it, it, it's a little bit off the ground currently. But it kind of looks ridiculous. I really wish I had stuck with the, the, the lesser incline. But I don't know how to do that because I still want this little curve inward kind of like that. I don't know. What I might do is in between episodes so so we'll, we'll finish it this episode because we're about to take it out on a on a mission but uh in between episodes i might do a like a renovation or something um based on you guys suggestions of course because i know there are some of you guys out there that are really good at building and making things look good and uh and i, I feel like this uh, and i said this last episode as well but i feel like this could use a bit of a makeover <laughs> definitely um so let's let's finish this thing up and uh, and get it on its mission and then uh, uh, by next episode, maybe we will have, uh, have gone into creative mode on a different world and built like a version 2.0, and then maybe we can kind of adapt this one to look like that. Um, because usually these things are a little easier to build in creative and then, uh, and then build them in survival once you know what they're going to look like. So, uh, so we might do that. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's finish this up and I'll be back once we have pretty much all of it done other than the back. So let's get the gun set up. Let's get that set up. Let's get everything set up. Let's go. All right. There's the skirting. It kind of makes it look a little bit better on the sides. It's not as blocky. Uh, it looks a little weird on the front right there. Of course, I might add something on top of it. I don't really know, but for now, I think we're just going to, we're just going to say that the gun is fine. Uh, I just need to add in the entrance now. And of course the seats, I don't know how to add in the entrance. How do, how, do, what does the back of one of these things look like? So it looks like the back of these things usually has just like a door, uh, like a big metal door. I don't think we have like a super strong door in Space Engineers that you can put on the on a on a ship, but we can make our own if we want to. It shouldn't be that hard. Um, all we need to do is have a little hinge, maybe somewhere, and then it'll open or something. <laughs> All right, so the way this will work will be pretty simple. You just have a little blast door like that, and then maybe put a little edge piece, maybe right there. Boom, and then extend it downward to maybe there. All right, something like this should work. Let's get it all welded in and see how it works. Hopefully it works the first time. Um, all right, so let's say I want to move this and give it a, uh, a nice upward, nope, other way, velocity. Okay, it does not fully open because the blocks underneath aren't allowing it to. So let me just real quick fix that. All right, putting those little sloped ones there. Let's see if that fixes it. Uh, open. Uh, yes, that does fix it. All right, sweet. Okay, bring this back. All right, now we have our door. All we need to do is finish up the back. The door doesn't protect this bottom part, but that should be fine. We don't really care if that gets destroyed or, or hit in other, any other way. All right, let's finish this up. All right, for now, I think this is good. Again, probably gonna probably gonna renovate this a little bit, but I want to at least take it on a little mission to see how it fares. Uh, this can open, still hopefully. Creak. Sweet. All right. Don't worry about those unfinished blocks again. That's because these blocks do not seem to want to weld. Whenever, no matter how close I get to them, they will never weld. That one did. I don't know how that one did, but the rest of them don't want to. Uh, Okay, so let's load this thing up because what we want to do for the remainder of this episode is we want to go and add a couple of towers. Uh, so one tower over in that direction and one tower over in that direction should give us the ability, and I'm talking about relays by the way, not just towers. Uh, towers with antennas on top of them. 
adding those towers should give us the ability to uh, use our GPS in game, which is what we've wanted to do for a long time. So, uh, so we're, we're gonna get that out of the way. Um, let's paint this real quick before we go on any missions because it definitely needs a coat of paint. A lot of you guys have been suggesting, by the way, rip this thing. This, every time I reload this world, this thing shifts to the, to the side a little bit more. I really don't know what's going on with that, but a lot of you guys suggested this thing to look kind of like this. So uh, let's, I mean, I guess let's give it a try. <clears throat> let's give it a try. Voice decided to cut out there for a second. Uh, how does that look? Maybe? I mean, it's definitely the color of the sand, so it's definitely pretty good in that regard. Let's get a, give it like a little darker uh, color for the gun. See if that looks any good like that. Boom, we got that gun. Maybe that as well. Well, maybe that'll be a nice gunmetal color. Uh, so maybe like a dark, no paint. Uh, I mean, well, paint, but like the the maybe battered paint right here. Boom. See how that looks. Uh, like a dark gun. Maybe like a dark one of these. Dark camera. I think it looks pretty good. Maybe like a dark door even. Check that out. <laughs> Again, renovations coming next episode. So, uh, so give give me all your suggestions uh, about how we can make this thing look a little bit better and maybe even perform better. But we won't know how it performs until we get out there. All right, let's get the materials and we'll head out so we can set up those antennas. How it's sir requires Centurion HE shells. All right, let's let's try and get one of those. Centurion HE shells are right here. They require a lot of magnesium, uh, but I want to be able to make like some. I don't know how many. We brought magnesium back in our last uh, our last uh, haul, I think. I don't know. You know what? It's probably still in our ship because we never connected. So let me just go and grab that. Uh, yeah, okay. It looks like we actually grabbed 19,000 magnesium. So I'm going to throw that in here and let that refine. And we should be able to get a couple of shells out of it. All right. Everything is loaded up. The only things we have to do now are... Uh, oh, wait. No, not everything's loaded up. We actually need the ammo. Hang on. Uh... H E. Let's see how much we have. Thirteen shells. That should that should serve us well, unless we're really bad at aiming. But uh, thirteen shells plus the additional three we have gives us uh, sixteen, and then we're gonna fire one when we leave, just so we can give, have a test fire. I think it looks really good from the front. Not gonna lie. I think it looks pretty awesome from the front. From the side, it looks a little weird. It, you know, it could use more on the back. It could use a a a, a, a less steep incline, maybe. I don't know. I think the gun looks pretty good. Uh, myself, I added these things right here because a, a picture on on uh, on Google Images that I was using did something similar. Um, all right, here we go. Everything is now set up. We now have our wheels set up so that they properly turn. Uh, let's see how this thing goes. This thing is really heavy. Uh, oh wait, is it even gonna fit through the top? It's gonna be real close. No, it's not gonna fit. Okay, uh, back up. We just need to uh, park and fix that real quick. All right, those blocks were originally intended to, to keep things from hitting this right here. However, this has less of a profile than this does, so we'll probably still be able to get by that, even though we remove those blocks. Uh, all right, let's close this. I'll put all my stuff in there since I have now those blocks. And let's uh, let's get going. See if we can get under this real quick. As long as our gun is not up, I think we should be fine. All right, <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Uh, let's get to a decent spot where we can shoot at something. I want to shoot at probably... Let's shoot at that little mountain. Yeah, I don't know. This thing is super heavy. I feel like it's going to be really hard to stop and that sort of thing. We're going to need a wheel hop bar, but we'll set, we'll, we'll set that up later. Uh, let's stop right here. I want to use the gun. So press number one for the view, which is pretty awesome. Uh, let's aim it up a little bit so we don't hit anything. Okay, so that is a problem, actually. We're, we're not able to see kind of where this is. Oops. Nope. That was my mistake. We're not able to see where this is aiming very well. Uh, now, we could add a camera onto the gun itself. Maybe. That might not be a bad idea. Okay, we now have two cameras. We have the camera we were using before, and then we have another camera, which is for precise aiming. So we have this one for looking around, and then the precise aiming camera. All right, let's close that again. And let's hop in here. All right, I'm not expecting this to go very well. I feel like the howitzer is going to be very, very strong. Ooh, we were actually aimed on target. That's pretty good. Even though we couldn't really see very well here. But we were aimed on target. Let's see how easy it is to control this. It's not terrible. It's not amazing, but it's not terrible either. Uh, I imagine aiming really far will have uh, will make it really difficult. So we might actually have to uh, set up a script to move the hinges uh, very slightly instead of the the larger. Let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. Three, two, one, fire! Wow! I was actually expecting that to like 
completely flip our vehicle. But that was actually pretty good. Um, I don't think it did any damage to the actual voxels over there. But uh, <laughs> that was strong. All right, let's go on our mission. Um, I need to move this back to where it was. So like that. And then maybe one of these. No. Yeah, that's probably fine. All right, let's go on our mission. We need to go and find a place for those towers. And then if we find anything along the way, why are we bumping around a little bit? Are we, uh, we're not, we're not clipping on any of the, uh, of the stuff, are we? All right, okay. Well, let's, uh, let's go back and see if we can uh, get 10 kilometers out where we can build a, a station. Now these things, these wheels are not amazing. Uh, I will, I will say that it's kind of slow. Kind of like you would imagine a tank to be. All right, let's continue on this way. I'm a little worried that we're gonna get, we're gonna end up going really quickly here, and uh, and end up flipping this thing. And I don't know that the battery method would help us very much with this, considering how large it is. Let's dodge these holes here. Got to be a little careful. All right, let's head out. Uh, yeah, let's head out this way. I don't think I've ever gone this way really. Oh, we have a we have a supply drop. I guess we could try and like attack that. Oh, we just jumped our oh we just jumped our tank. That was not a smart idea. That could have been bad. <laughs> but we we have a lot of clearance for the well. Okay, we have some clearance for the wheels. It's not terrible. Really, this thing should have a speed limit of like 30 mi 30 meters per second. But you know what? I can't be asked. I'm just gonna let it kind of ride. So between this episode and next episode, when I go to remodel this thing, I will be looking for a way to add guns, like additional guns onto this thing. So if you guys have an idea for that, uh, please let me know in the comments below and I will see if I can uh, see if I can do something like that. Because in real life, usually these things only have like a couple guns and they're usually on the swivel turret up top. But um, it doesn't really work as well for space engineers, I would imagine, because things can get destroyed so easily. So... Um, so we definitely want to have multiple guns, at least a l another little turret, for in case this howitzer thing goes out of commission. Um, for now, we have our little our little uh, machine gun thing. <laughs> so if, if, if things really go bad, we can just open fire. And hopefully we're protected enough in our seat that we don't have to uh, worry about getting shot out of it. Because if that happens, then we're in bad luck. Or then, then we're in bad territory. I'll tell you what, the first person view is not amazing here. <laughs> Almost not even drivable. Definitely would not want. Oh, we're going a little fast. I didn't even know because I was in first person. Where is that? Of a Wait, did I pass it? Oh, I'm passing it. Well, shoot. We're definitely within range of the larger guns if there are any. But uh, but I don't know if there are. So we're gonna get on this little hill behind it, and we're gonna see. We will find out. Uh, we can definitely withstand a, at least a couple of shots, unless they shoot our little howitzer thing, which would not be very nice of them. Is there anyone over here? I guess we'll just drive up. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, yep, there is some stuff. Hey, what, what, are, what are you trying to shoot? There's no way you can hit me. Um, okay, let's uh, let's try and get some long-range shots. Let's go over on that mountain over there and see if we can hit him from there. Uh, we know there's at least one gun, but it looked like a small turret, not a not a large one. So let's uh, let's hop up here and see if uh, and see if we can outrange it. Uh, yeah, try to try to mess me up. Actually, it might not be a small one because we're kind of far from it, aren't we? And still able to shoot at us. All right, let's see if we're able to hit from here. Oh, holy crap, there's a, there's a ship right above us! If we wanted to, we could probably hit that as well. Because I think these things have a, have a very large range. Don't they? I don't necessarily know if I want to waste a, an ammo, but... Especially since I don't have very fine uh, turning of this thing. Well, what the heck. We'll give it a shot. <laughs> we missed. There's actually curvature on this, that's kind of cool. All right, let's aim down. All right, when we get back to base, I'm gonna make a script, or maybe in between this episode and next one, I'm gonna make a script that allows me to uh, to actually move this thing finely, uh, instead of having these gigantic movements when I uh, when I use these buttons right here. Uh, but until then, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to hop in here, go to our rotor, and uh, and move it very, very, very slowly. So kind of like this. Give it. 
Yes, like that. Nope, nope, come on. You can do it. Okay, it's a little difficult. But with a script, we'd be able to make it a little easier to do this. Alright, you know what? While we're here, it, I, I am going to actually make that script really quickly. I'm just going to throw it together and see if uh, see if I can get it. Because it's really simple. All I want it to do is increase or decrease the value by, uh, by a very, very small amount. So, let me just throw these rocks in here so I can make some... Uh, um, some displays. All right, I think I've got it now. I might need to do a little bit of tweaking to try and to try and get this to uh, to work exactly how I want it. Currently, it's not that bad. Uh, okay, let's try and stop it. I need to go up a little bit. I have one for stop as well, but I haven't set those up. So there's a key you can type for stop. Right, go up a little bit. All right, let's zoom in so we can get better range and up. Okay, we got a red marker. Sweet. Let's try and go for that far one first. That's not a bad shot right there. Maybe right there, because it goes down a little bit. Let's let's fire. Alright, three, two, one, let it rip! That was a miss. Alright, aim down a little bit. It actually aimed a little higher than I thought it would. So we're gonna aim down and over. To right about there. Alright, three, two, one, let him rip! Oh, that is a direct hit on the close one. I don't know if it hit the far one. We'll have to wait for the dust to settle. It did not, but let's aim up a little bit and see if we can uh, see if we can find that one. Uh, so up a little bit, because I've got to remember my camera is a little bit to the left of the gun. We're not looking through the gun. Three, two, one, fire! There we go, a direct hit as well. <laughs> this is pretty awesome. All right, let's aim over here, see if we see any other guns. Uh, I don't see any yet. I really need to uh, to implement that stop one so I don't have to click this a bunch of times. But I think that's pretty good. Uh, let me show you guys the script really quickly for any of you guys who are interested. So it's really simple. Um, so I'll click edit. All it has is it's got a rotor, a hinge, and a piston name. You set whichever one you want to do. Uh, and then it goes and uh, pretty much every time you click it, it increases the current velocity. Unless you type stop, at which point it will like set it to zero. But every time you click it, it increases the, the, uh, the velocity. Um, by, uh, by an amount that you set in the argument. So when you set the argument, you determine how much it'll increase every time. Uh, and then it goes and finds the blocks and sets them to that velocity. So if we want to take a look at the, uh, when we press G, all these down here, when you go and run them, they also set an argument. So if we go to programmable block and drag this down to here uh, and click run, it'll allow you to set the argument. So this is where I set negative 0.01. But if I wanted it to go a little faster, I could do 0.02. If I wanted it to go really fast, I could do 0.5 or something like that. And if I wanted it to stop, I just type uh, stop because I programmed that in to, to be able to stop it. So yeah, that's pretty much how it works. Um, and it will actually, uh, so it actually goes through the list of all of these. Uh, so if you were to set a rotor name, a hinge name, and a piston name, it would actually go and t set them all to the same value. So if I wanted to, I could set up a third script that has a piss or has a hinge name and a rotor name and set that to stop and it would be an all stop thing. So essentially they would they would both stop at the same time. Um, all right, I think we're good with this thing. Uh, let's drive a little bit closer and see if we can see if we can figure out what's going on over there. Uh, I'm gonna drive on that hill to our left. I think that's probably the best the best bet here. Um, because this this type of thing right here cannot fire on the move. It's not a good idea uh, because aiming is so precise with this. Uh, you kind of have to uh, have to set up pretty far away. Which kind of makes it a niche vehicle. Like it's not it's not something you would just drive into battle. Uh, although I kind of wish it could be that. But we have another thing right there. I don't think it notices us. It definitely should because we're very close to it. But let's hop into the uh, let's hop into the thing and see if we can swing this around and hit that. That's probably the final one. So uh, hop into hop in number three first because that's the uh, that's the easier one to aim. So let's shift this around here. I need to hit number six. Get it in in the uh, in the right zip code. Let's go to number four right here, and we're gonna start using our precise controls. You hear all the clicking. It's so much clicking to uh, to get this thing to to aim to the right place. Uh, I don't think we can actually. Like I feel like yeah we're we're not able to aim any lower. We're going to have to uh, shift our movement a little bit with the vehicle. Okay guys, what we're about to do because I don't think I can hit him from here. Uh, let me go to my four camera. 
Oh, I am in my four camera. Why am I aiming up? Oops. Nope. 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 Not what I wanted to do. Uh, we're about to attempt to aim at that and shoot it while driving forward. I don't think this is going to be... This is going to work very well, but... I'm going to I'm gonna try and aim down. I mean, we could attempt to not move anything at all and just see if we can drive into a shot. Let's try it. All right. We need to aim a little bit to the right. And fire! <laughs> Not an amazing shot. Oh, he's shooting. Okay, aim up, aim up, aim up, aim up, aim up. Come on. Aim up, you fool! Aim up! Fire! <laughs> I think we got him. I'm not sure. Yeah, okay, we definitely got him. Oh my god. <laughs> that was crazy. Alright, let's get let's get in there. Let's see what we uh what we've unlocked. What we've well, we've conquered the November 9 supply drop, guarded by three different machine gun posts, which were, of course, no match for our thing. One did put up a fight, but uh, the other two were just in very bad locations to be hit from a howitzer. Uh, <laughs> Alright, let's get all this stuff. Lots of lots of good materials that we can store inside our new, uh, our new tank. This is the second machine gun nest. Not much left, honestly. That thing is- that thing really packs a punch. Honestly, I think if we were to, like, hit one of those ships that flies by, it would do some devastating damage. I don't know- see, it looks really good from afar. I think this looks so good from back here. From up close, it looks a little wonky. I will not lie. But, uh, fr but from afar, it looks really good. That thing hit us! I wonder if it did any damage. Um, because I know they hit us in the front. Um, I'm not seeing any damage here. This is where one hit. Yeah, he didn't even get through our armor. You can see where the bullets hit and that they've done, like, absolutely nothing. Oh, this one did, like, a tiny bit. They did a little bit on the bulletproof glass. So they were kind of shooting in this direction. But wow, this thing. Yeah, that's pretty good. That is awesome. Oh, he hit here, too. You trying to destroy my camera? I mean, that would be really smart, but, but, uh, kind of mean, too. <laughs> Alright, with nothing left of the base, it's time to continue on our journey to where we're going to put up our tower. Let's see how far we are from our hunchback. We're only six kilometers. We need to get another four. Let's uh, let's start heading out this way to see if we can get to where we want to go. Um, now, unfortunately, we don't have a ore detector on this thing. I should probably put one on at some point because that would be uh, somewhat helpful in being able to, to see some of these ores. But honestly, this vehicle is not really the type of thing that I would take out like, on an everyday kind of thing. I'd probably still take out the truck. Um, because it's faster, it's it's easier to, to drive. This one right here is something you take out if, like, uh, if you've, you found a base, or if you know you're about to attack something, you take this guy out first, so he can uh, he can kind of shoot the things from afar. That seems to be the uh, the way to go. Or you try and, like, find, <laughs> find the super gremlins and stuff and shoot them out of the sky with this thing. That'd be really cool. I kind of want to want to try that all right we're getting just about to the point of 10 kilometers we need to go a little farther but we're also getting to a crevice so i think this might be good not right where we are right now but the little mountain right in front of us or the little hill kind of thing might be perfect for where we want to put a, an antenna um yeah because i mean there's not much around here honestly that's a perfect mountain over there i really like it but uh but yeah i think this right here is 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 ideal for what we want so let's uh let's put it here um, let's park this thing kind of, uh, facing maybe this way, because we have our, our, uh, our thing in the back. Park it right there. Alright, let's get to work on our second antenna. So for this thing, we know how we want to set it up. We just want to go, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Alright, I think something like that for the battery thing is not that bad. Uh, and then for the sides, we had the, uh, these things that went up, essentially. And you know what? I think I'm going to make them a little, uh, a little skinnier this time. Um... Because I've learned. I'm a different person than I was when I built the first one. So we're going to go with these blocks. Uh, and make it a little skinnier. How far did we go up? Eight, probably. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we did that on all sides. Okay, I've got to be really careful. I don't think we're going to be able to make the second one. Uh, because I actually didn't think of something. I don't have any ice on this thing. Which means once I run out of hydrogen, there's not much I can do. Um, because I don't have any way to, uh, to replenish without any ice. So, uh, we're probably only going to be able to do one, and then we're going to head back to base. Um, and then maybe we'll just have the third one next episode, uh, to try and keep this episode at a reasonable length, because I know they've been getting longer and longer. 
But uh, let's, okay, let's try and build these things. Boom, 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 boom. All right, just getting the catwalks up and running. This one right here, this catwalk's a little weird because we want to put a ladder right there. So we have to put this upside down. Um, and we have to have these railings on the outside, which is why we do it kind of like this uh, right here. But with that set up, uh, all we need to do now is add the ladders and then add the antennas. So we'll start with the uh, ladders, because I think that's the easier part. Ladder, ladder, ladder. All right, and come on, cylindrical thing. Done. All right, now we just need to get the catwalks on the top and uh, and the battery. All right, battery up and wind turbine is up as well. Let's check out the wind. You know, it occurs to me that in both of the ones that we set up, uh, we had a storm going on, so we can't see the normal output of a wind turbine. But I think that's going to be fine. All right, let's, uh, let's do the top part. All right, I think that's how we're going to do it this time. So instead of having, like, the big thing like we had last time, it's just going to be one right there instead of being on the side. So that should make it look a little bit better. And we can even make some, uh, we can even put some railings up if we wanted to. I am going to weld these guys under it, though, because they are important. We don't want them to fall. How is our jetpack doing? Let's see. Uh, 17 power? Okay, so we need to be uh, extra careful now with how we use our stuff. Antenna, can we place you yet? No, because we need steel plates, which we don't have on us. Uh, but what we can place, possibly, is a railing. One there. One there. One here. And one there. Oops. Okay, we don't want this one right there, though. All right, last trip. Here we go. And we have an antenna. This is going to be our west relay. So we have an east relay, which is probably just like directly over there. And we have a, re a west relay, which is now this one. Let's hop down here and uh, configure it a little bit. So I believe we called the other one just east relay. So we'll just call this one west relay. And we will give it a radius of 12,000, uh, which will be 12,000 kilometers. Enable broadcasting. Sure. I think everything is good. Um, I'm not going to weld up these outside blocks. Honestly, with the last one, I thought it looked better with them unwelded. So in this case, I think we're just going to leave them unwelded. And that's going to be our antenna. Um, it's got a little bit of a slimmer profile, I think, than the last one did. And that's because this is, like, not on the side, but it's kind of closer to the middle. Um, I like it. I like our, our west relay. All right, that's the only one we'll be able to do because, again, our jetpack is nearly out. We need to head back to base. Uh, but also, maybe we'll get, like, a decently shorter episode instead of, like, a 50-minute one. I don't know. I never really know until editing uh, how long the episode is. But, uh, but all right, let's head back to base. Um, we also have a problem where I'm not... Like, I can't stay out past dark because I didn't actually weld in the, uh, the lights. So that's fun. Let's head back to the Hunchback dropship a little bit cautiously. Oh wait, we never added lights to- okay, it's- we'll come back to it or something. Maybe we'll fly back to it with a couple of lights and add them on. For now, we're just gonna have to let that be. It's fine, as long as it exists there, it allows us to use the thing. Making our way back home, driving slow over the dunes, cause I don't wanna die. da na 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 da 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 Blindly driving over mountains, hoping that there's not a crevice on the other side. Da na 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 na. Ba na na da 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 da. If I could drive a faster tank that had more guns, then I would thank all of the people who helped me build it. If I could drive faster. Da na 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 na. Ba -na 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 -na. Yo, okay, the storm is gone, and it is definitely getting dark, so this is not good. We still have seven kilometers to go, and I know for a fact that there is a sketchy, crevice-looking thing between us and the dropship somewhere. It is quickly becoming pitch black. Oh, no, this is not going to be good. Um, now, here's the thing. There might be a chance... Oh, good lord. Every time I think it can't get any darker, it gets a little darker. Uh, but I know there's nothing between us and that mountain in front of us, though, for a fact. For a fact, which means we can at least get to that little silhouette without worrying about anything. 
And maybe from there we can actually see our base or something. I don't know. But uh, but currently we're running on blind faith. Um, but there might be a chance that I can actually make my ship. Oh, hey, it's light in there. There might be a chance that I can actually add that thing to the front of our ship. All right, let's... Uh, oh, we have a little... Wait, what's going on? Are we... Okay, we're at zero speed. Okay, let's stop real quick. I'm going to hop out. We're going to open this. I'm going to see if I can make a light, because if I can... That will help us. We're going backwards. I don't want to hop out when we're going backwards. Why are we going backwards? Sometimes the parking brake is not amazing. I feel like I need to get that fixed. Unloading world. Oh. Now that's... Now that's something. Alright, we're back. The world is correctly loaded now. And uh, and let's let's build our, our lights. Because we're definitely going to need them here. Boom. Boom. Alright, with our added light, let's get home. We're about halfway there. And hopefully there's not a big crevice. Remember, the last time we fell into the crevice was right after we finished adding lights to the ship. Let me press K and go to lights, see if I can uh, increase their radius. I don't know if that's possible. Yeah, they're already... I can increase their intensity, but... Offset! No, it's fine. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Um, I, I mean, we're five kilometers. There's probably not a crevice between us and then now. I know there was at one point, but I think we may have passed it. I hope we may have passed it. Okay, there's now there's an edge right there, but we just went over a mountain, so I don't think this is a crevice. I think this is just a the other side of the mountain. I mean, I think I would have known if there was a crevice within three kilometers of our base. So, uh, so I don't think... I mean, there's still, like, potential valleys we could run into, but I don't think there's anything deadly. And I think I... Oh, yeah, I do see our base. Okay. I technically don't even... You know what? We'll, we'll go cinematic mode for this now. Cinematic first-person mode. Yo, you can actually still see the base! <laughs> That's awesome! Um, okay, I'll, I'll try it. Why not? We'll try to drive in this mode, even though it's ridiculous and insane. Uh, oh no. Alright, no, I'm, I'm done with that. Let's let's just continue normal cinematic mode. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything this close to our base. Now, I know there's a way up here, but I don't know exactly where it is. I think it's just right here. I guess we'll find out. We also have to be aware of the hole, uh, because there's a little mine here as well. That we don't really want to crash into. I can't see what's on the other side of that. Okay, it's fine. There's nothing. I, yeah, I think we're I think we're there. I think we're good. Alright. Welcome back. Home sweet home. The lights are beautiful. The base is itself is beautiful. Let's, uh, we're gonna have to come around the front because the, um, the back is blocked by the truck thing. We really need more lights on this wall over here. The other wall is perfect. It's got those green lights that, uh, that tell you where you are. Got the dune power bank off in the distance over there. Nice. Hello, base. Um, I'm going to have to... Oh, and actually, looking at that, the west relay is at least 10 kilometers away. So, good job, us. We built an east and a west relay so far that are... The appropriate distance. Now for this, I'm gonna have to lower this um, a little bit. So let's use our, our our normal lowering thing, or our slow lowering thing, and then we're gonna use our all stop function to stop it all right there, and that should be enough to let us get under here. All right. I can't see anything. <laughs> all right. Welcome back home, everybody. It was a successful mission. We wanted to put up two relays, but we only put up one. That's fine, though, because next episode should be the final iteration of this thing. Um, now, I will say this. This ship has been growing on me a little bit. Uh, at first, I thought it looked really weird and was was ugly and, and I don't know, I, I, felt, I felt like I could do a lot better. But honestly, like, looking at it from far, it looks really cool just to see it kind of off in the distance. Um, maybe we need to add a little bit of stuff on the back right here so it's not just a flat back. Um, and there's, there goes our fuel. But, uh, but honestly, I think it looks pretty good. Um, and in fact, from here it looks really good too. It's just when you get up close that it looks a little weird. But anyways, that's going to be this episode. Uh, I want you guys' suggestions, if you have them, for what we can do about this ship to make it look a little bit better, perhaps. Um, what do you guys think are its uh, pros? What do you guys think are its weaknesses? Uh, let me know. Let me know in the comments below. Next episode will be the final iteration of this vehicle, and we will be trying to add, or trying to put up the... Uh, the final antenna relay, which will unlock GPS for the rest of the series. So, yeah. All right. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.